God is not going to show you the journey. He can't show you the journey. But if he showed you the vision and you haven't reached your vision yet, that means you just got to keep going. Mm -hmm. If he showed you the mansion and you're still in an apartment, the mansion is coming. If he showed you a husband and you're still single, the husband is coming. If he showed you a family and you don't have, you haven't been able to bear children yet, the children are coming. So you have to keep your eye on what God showed you and you can't worry about how and when it's going to happen. You just have to believe it's going to happen. Welcome to Crafted Entrepreneur. Today, I am so pumped to bring you the incredible talent that is Braylon, better known as B. Simone. She is a true powerhouse of entertainment, humor, and business. She has an impressive following of over 10 million devoted fans on social media, and her unique sense of humor, it's very unique, has truly made its mark. And I just met B like a couple weeks ago. We spoke on stage together and I was like, we became instant BFFs because she's wearing a Jesus necklace. <laughs> and I was like, that's my girl. So I know every single one of you are gonna love hearing her story of how she became, well, not an overnight success, but that's what it looks like on MTV's Wild and Out and how she sells out her comedy tours all over the nation. So you're gonna love B. Simone. Welcome. Thank you. That was such a good intro. <laughs> like virtual claps, virtual claps. I need to take you everywhere with me so you can just do that everywhere I go. I would be happy to do that. <laughs> yes, like I, I'll, I will be the agent. Okay, so I'm so excited to have you here because you have this gorgeous heart. Thank and you. And like when you look at you on social media, you could tell that you have a good heart, but you are just like the most genuine, Thank you. loving you person. You too. That's why we connected. I know. She saw my necklace. She's like, you love Jesus? I love Jesus. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I love Jesus so much. We prayed together. We laughed together. We had dinner. We talked about business. You are so sweet. Hmm. That's why I'm here. I know. <laughs> like, let me know when you want me to come. I'm here. Okay. So tell me how you go from being a pastor's kid. Yeah. To now being this huge entertainer yeah. that is making people laugh. Yeah. I, if I need to laugh, I go to your page. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. You guys, stand up was never the plan. Mm -hmm. It never was the plan. I literally am practicing so much now. I've been doing stand up for five years. I went up here in LA. I'm going to these little hole in the walls and practicing my content and my jokes and stuff but it's one of the hardest things I've ever done but I never wanted to be a stand-up comedian I just wanted to be in the entertainment world so arts and music and dance I always did that growing up and I lived in Dallas Texas I was like you know what I'm gonna pack up this little Toyota I had three hubcaps oh well I think one rolled off on my way to Atlanta <laughs> I was like whatever can fit in this Toyota is what I'm taking to Atlanta I moved to Atlanta with like three thousand dollars I thought I was balling I was like I have three thousand dollars I had never lived on my own by the way <laughs> so I thought three thousand dollars was a lot of money I never had bills I never had to do like any adult stuff that three thousand dollars might have lasted two days <laughs> I was like whoa I'm broke so I moved to Atlanta and I started to go on my journey to be an artist I wanted to do music I moved out there for music and acting which I'm still doing now I haven't done music in a while but acting for sure still in the entertainment world and then my videos on Instagram took off so like you said an overnight success it might look like that to the public mm -hmm. but I've been making comedy content on social media for over a decade mm -hmm. so you know I'm still trying to reach those levels and still, you know, do arenas as a comedian. I've done comedy clubs, I've done theaters, but now the goal is like arenas, you know, to headline arenas. So I'm still working my way up for what I define my career as successful. You know, I'm still working on a lot of goals. So it takes a certain type of mindset to leave everything you know. Yes, yes. And go where, I don't know if you knew anybody. And you're like, I'm gonna make my what? mark yes. in this world. Talk to me about that mindset. Like, how did you get into a healthy enough mindset to and do that? Yeah, it's crazy you're bringing that up because I'm starting a new brand, which I will give you the exclusive later. Um, I don't want to say the name, but it's all about mindset. I Since I left that environment and when I go back home to visit my family or my friends or see people that are still in the same place mentally, not mm -hmm. even just physically, but mentally, that when I left, they're in the same place from a decade ago. It's all mindset. And mm -hmm. I think one of the gifts God gave me was a lot of my mindset 
was just already in me. It wasn't learned. So I know a part of my purpose is to help people shift their mindset at an earlier age. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult to change your mindset at 30, 40, 50, 60. The older you get, you're like stuck in your ways. So I know a part of my purpose is to get these young women's mindset at an earlier age. It is your mindset, though. You know, somebody can look at a glass, the glass analogy. I look at it as half full. I'm very optimistic. I'm very like the victory is already ours. It's okay. It doesn't look good now, but this pain is temporary. The valley is temporary. The mountain is coming. And another person can look at it and have a scarce mindset and be like, the glass is half empty. We're about to run out. We need to secure this. We need to hold on to it. We don't want to lose it. I'm, you know, so I'm really trying to get that mindset out to people that don't have it. I Mm. think it's super, super important. That's what got me to this point. Just having faith over fear and and doing it scared anyway, you guys, you're going to be scared. You're going to be tired. You're going to be anxious. You might have a depressed season, but doing it anyway. And that's what sets successful people apart from people that aren't successful. We choose to do it when we don't feel like it. If I only worked and worked out and ate right and did the the things that I needed to do when I felt like it, I wouldn't be where I am today. Mm -hmm. You have to do it when your emotions don't align with it. Mm. Oh, you have to do it when your emotions don't align with it. You can't trust your feelings. Mm -mm. They waver. One second, I'm happy. Then the next second, I'm like, I miss my ex. (laughs) Then the next second, I'm like, that's him. (laughs) Then the next second, I'm like, I love Jesus. The next second, I'm like, where is God? Because I'm not feeling him right. You know, it's it's mm-hmm. feelings, it's emotions. You're a human. So you have to keep your, your mind and your eyes on the truth. You know the truth. And you have to focus on that in the midst of how you feel. Mm. Okay, so tell me about the truth. What is the truth? The truth is you're victorious. The truth is if you have a vision and you see it, it's already in you. It's in you to get there. The truth is, once again, no matter how you feel, you have everything in you to make things happen. If God gave you the vision, and let me tell you, Miles Monroe said this, God is not going to show you the journey. Mm -hmm. If he showed, if he showed me the journey, I wouldn't have signed up for this. (laughs) I would have said, oh no, I'm going to lose my friends. I'm going to be broke. I'm going to be sleeping on the floor. I'm not going to be a singer. I'm going to be a stand-up comedian. I'm going to, oh, no, I'm not going to Atlanta. He can't show you the journey. Mm -hmm. But if he showed you the vision and you haven't reached your vision yet, that means you just got to keep going. Mm -hmm. If he showed you the mansion and you're still in an apartment, the mansion is coming. If he showed you a husband and you're still single, the husband is coming. If he showed you a family and you don't have, you haven't been able to bear children yet, the children are coming. So you have to keep your eye on what God showed you and you can't worry about how and when it's going to happen. You just have to believe it's going to happen. Mm, yes. Okay. I'm like at church I'm saying amen. <laughs> mm. Okay. It's one thing to say these things, right? Yes. And go like, this yes. is it. This is yep. it. I am victorious. Yep. And it's a whole nother thing to then go, okay, I'm going to take a bold step of faith. I'm going to put myself out there. I'm going to go after the dream. I'm going to be a singer. Wait, no, now I'm going to be a stand-up comedian. I mean, how do you even (laughs) make that pivot? Because it's so different, right? Remember when I met you, I was like, I need to hang out with you because I'm not funny. (laughs) (laughs) You are funny. You're so cute. I love you so much. You know what? Okay, so this is good for entrepreneurs, anybody who wants to do business owner, anybody that's trying to find their purpose. Mm -hmm. Number one, I said this on stage in Dallas, I think a part of your purpose is your gifts, using your gifts to add value somewhere, right? So if you don't know your purpose, what is your gift? If you don't think you know your gift, something that comes easy and natural to you, but it's usually difficult for other people. So that's probably one of your gifts, right? Mm -hmm. I was doing music and comedy, and then I started just uploading. I I wasn't even thinking I was uploading comedy. I was like, I'm just being myself. I'm waitressing at a restaurant today. Instagram finally has videos because it was all pictures at one point. Now it's 15-second videos. I have been waitressing a 13-hour shift. I'm just going to talk to my phone. Y'all, I'm working. I made ten dollars today. I'm so hungry. Like just <laughs> venting, but the venting was funny because that was just my personality. Mm-hmm. In my mind, I wasn't making comedy videos, and that took off. You know, I would post my music. It would get like a couple likes, and the comedy or the ranting videos would just go viral. I'm like, sometimes you have to pivot with what works, you guys, mm-hmm. without compromising your character, without compromising who you are. Yes. I was still being myself and able to be creative, but that is what was working. So I focused on that and gave my audience what they wanted. Give your audience what they want, not just what you want, because you're feeding a community. Yes, you want to do what you want to do, but your community, the comments, the interaction will tell you what's working. Mm -hmm. So I think people need to know when to pivot and kind of 
just take that step of faith, like you said, not be so scared and just be like, okay, this is working. Let me stay in this lane Mm -hmm. and not focus on A through Z. I did not have a vision on being here, on being a stand up comic. I was just like, okay, make comedy videos. I'm on number B or uh, (laughs) number B, letter B (laughs) until God tells me C, until we go to D. I wasn't worried about getting to Z. So just take it step by step. I think we look so far ahead and it gets overwhelming. Right. One step at a time. Like if you would have thought about, oh, I'm, I have 10 million followers. Like if you really think about it, that's a big responsibility. What? It's a lot. So you don't even want to know that. Yeah. Like, I'm just going to do even, it. I'm just going to do it. And that was never the goal. Mm-hmm. The goal was just to be my true, authentic self, show my journey. And I kind of, you can go to my YouTube, y'all. I'm literally like 10 years ago on YouTube making vlogs. Like, I'm going to Atlanta. Oops, my apartment just flooded. I don't have a bed. Like, it's all on YouTube. So, you know document your journey even if you don't put it out there you will go back and see what god has brought you through Mm -hmm. absolutely oh my gosh okay so you're making this pivot into Mm -hmm. stand-up comedy Mm -hmm. do you have connections at this point of who you're hanging out with yes i've built my connections through music okay so and now i realize what that season was for like even when i started doing comedy I was like oh let me hit up this person that I met in the studio let me hit up these people that I met when I was putting out you know my songs and stuff so that season wasn't in vain it wasn't a waste I've met a lot of people in the music industry that have impacted my career today Mm. yeah how do you build up that like relationship capital I think you have to and a lot of people like I'm an introvert I don't like to talk I don't It's like you have to do it in your own way and figure out a way to open your mouth and talk to people. Mm -hmm. We wouldn't be here if we didn't connect in person in Dallas. Like we were on the same panel. But if we just both sat there and didn't have a conversation, we wouldn't be here being able to pour into your audience. Right. So I think there's a way to do it and be creative with still being yourself and not overextending, you know, but you have to talk to people. You have to get out. It's like, you know. I have a relationship coach and a therapist. Okay, y'all. Shout out to therapy. My therapist is like, you want to be married, but you always in the bed. (laughs) Your husband is not going to break into your house. (laughs) And I'm like, well, he might. (laughs) But do I want to marry that guy? (laughs) Right. But do I want to marry him? If he's cute, I might say, okay, take me. Take me, Robert. I don't know. But you know, so you can't say, well, I'm not meeting anybody and I don't have it. And you're not going to these events. Mm-hmm. You're not even me as many connections as I have. My friends that are in the entertainment industry, my comedian friends, I don't just ask them for tickets. I buy a ticket to their show. I go study. I'm going to a show tonight. Hopefully if I can go. Um, It's a theater show. It's like 30 people. I'm just going to watch acting. I'm going to study my craft. Even at the level I'm at, I still put myself in rooms where I can be impacted in a certain creative way and be around people that I ultimately want to be like. Yeah. So you have to put yourself in those rooms. You have to go to these conferences. You have to go to these shows. If you want to be an actress, you need to be pulling up to Broadway. You need to be flying to New York and sitting and watching Broadway shows. You don't know who you're going to meet in the audience. Yes. You know, and I think a lot of people are trying to reach the Oprah's and the the next trying to get to Kayla and trying to get to be Simone. And it's like, that next person might be in your community, Mm -hmm. might be your next door neighbor, might be at the event you go to that's sitting next to you. And they're like, oh, I'm a producer. Oh, I'm a writer. We can make a movie. Mm -hmm. We don't have to always chase the people that are already, quote unquote, made it. We are the next generation of that. So connect with people in your community. Mm -hmm. And it's like God made us to be connected. A hundred percent. That's why most of us, we don't like being alone. Yes. We're not made to be alone. Yes. We're meant to be in community with people and like helping each other yes. reach each yes. other's goals because that's why God made the body. Yes. You know, the church. It's like we're just supposed to be elevating each other. Yep. And so I get so excited for where you're going and Thank you. all the people you're making happy Thank on a you. daily basis. It's crazy. Like, did you think? <sighs> I'm just going to make a lot of money making people happy one day. And making I did people not. It's, and it's crazy. And what's even crazier is... <laughs> I'm a human, right? So my job, it doesn't matter how I feel. Like I have literally, I I performed at the Barclays Center. I was walking to stage, bawling, crying. They're like, be Simone. I have to wipe my tears. 
nobody cares if you're crying, if you're going through your depression, if you're going through your pain, if you're going, they want you to show up. When you get on this camera, yes, you can share your story, but it's like, we're expecting our episodes every week or mm -hmm. however often you drop them, right? So I say all that to say, you were like, um, how does it feel to make people happy? It feels amazing. But in the midst of pouring into people, your entrepreneurship, your job, my job is to make people laugh. I have to make sure I'm happy mm -hmm. first, That's right? So, so I can do it authentically. I can do it vulnerably. I can do it truthfully. I can get on that stage and give my all to my audience and a part of my purpose. So make sure whatever you're doing, whatever industry you're in, you are filling your cup up first before you feel obligated or stressed out about filling up your community. Oh. And I've gone through that. Like, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's why I'm glad I've built my audience on full transparency. I've cried on the internet. I've smiled on the internet. Y'all aren't just going to see my highlight reel. Y'all are going to see when I'm heartbroken and you're going to see when I'm happy. So I can show up as my full authentic self no matter what season I'm in. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. I I can't do that. I have a hard time doing that. Really? No. <laughs> I'm like, God, like, that's awesome. Yeah. No, because I just, I like, I, I retract. Like okay. when things aren't going my way, I just, nobody's going to see me. Okay. I'll you be, just go into like hibernation mm -hmm. until you're okay. Yeah. And that's something. And, and that, but, but that's how I take care of myself. But even you talking about that, mm -hmm. saying that, like not always saying everything's good. I got money. I got success. I have this show, the lights. No, if that's what you do, cool. But like you even saying that on a mic is helping somebody. Mm -hmm. You guys, every we're human. Yeah, we are human. I don't care how much y'all see me laughing on the internet. I was crying yesterday. <laughs> I was. I was crying yesterday. I, I cry today I, just to get it out. I don't even know why I'm gonna cry, but it just need to get it out the way for the week so I can have a nice weekend. You know, <gasps> but you know, we just want people to remember that in the midst of the highlight reel, we're still going through different things. You're a wife. You have you have a family like you go through real life things outside of your title of who you mm -hmm. are. Mm -hmm. So, you know, y'all aren't alone on that journey. What does it look like for you to fill yourself up? I do a lot of self-care. Like I don't I yeah, you know, I have my little things, my little bags and I like jewelry and I buy my little things, but I told I, you you need to have a bodyguard. I she was like, Today she doesn't need a bodyguard, but every other day she does. No, let me cover up my wrist because <laughs> This might be worth a little something, but other than that, I, I left my diamonds at home. Daniel was like, you need a bodyguard. I'm like, girl, don't nobody want to bother me. But um, outside of those, like, you know, I, I don't spend my money on a lot of materialistic things right now. I go through my little seasons, but I spend my money on food, travel, and self-care. Mm -hmm. I have a luxury every, I, I, I'm like, okay, what is my convenience this month? Like, everything can't be convenient. You don't want to get in the habit of having everything convenient. It's just lazy sometimes I'm like I don't uber eats 30 times today get up you can walk across the street and get a sandwich <laughs> the food don't have to come straight to your bed now you know you got to get up and walk but I like to spend my money on self-care I get massages mm -hmm. I, I I spend my money on therapy therapy's not free I have I have more books than I've read but I need to start reading my books on my book you're show. gonna read my but book I'm gonna read your book <laughs> I keep buying books at least that's the first step right get things in your environment that have helped you and you're not gonna know how to fill up your cup until you do it. Mm -hmm. At one point, journaling was so good for me. And then I got to a point where I'm like, this is kind of getting like repetitive. I'm not really feeling it. It wasn't really doing the same thing that it used to be. So I started to just voice record and I would go back and listen. You have to figure out what works for you, but finding that self-care routine to help you stay in a good mental state. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. So you built this following, then you built Be Simone Fit. Yes. How much weight did you lose? <laughs> you know what? Before I get to that, <laughs> I don't have no real friends because none of y'all told me I was big. <laughs> I was big as hell. Excuse me. I'm so sorry. I was big as heck. Lord. I go back and look at pictures. I was like, so nobody was going to tell me to take this crop top off? <laughs> <laughs> I look pregnant. I lost 45 pounds, 45 pounds. You didn't look bad. A girl, <laughs> look at you. You're trying to be so nice. You, you look beautiful. You're a child of God. Shut up, Kayla. I was a balloon. <laughs> Lord, ain't none of y'all my real friends. If any of my friends are watching this, y'all fake. <laughs> Did nobody tell me, put the cupcake down. <laughs> Somebody should have said, put the cupcake down. <laughs> Lord, I lost 45 pounds, girl. And I still don't have an ab. How do you get abs? <laughs> Well, <laughs> you know, uh, you did you did eat salad that one night we went to dinner. Yeah, but then I think I had cake after. <laughs> See? Oh my gosh, we did. We ordered the dessert. We ordered the entire dessert. 
<laughs> and I kept ordering. I kept looking at Kayla. I was like, if she don't stop me, then I'm not going to say, never mind. I kept looking at the waiter. I said, well, can we get the chocolate cake? Kayla was quiet. I said, well, she's coming into agreement. She wants the chocolate cake too. <laughs> so, you know, we had salad. And, bad and, and then we had cake. <laughs> Lord. Balance. But yes, I lost 45 pounds, <laughs> which was a blessing. It was a lot. Like, and I'm super honest and transparent. Like, I got diagnosed with PCOS. I was on Ozempic, which, you know, has been overused for people that don't have PCOS and weight loss. And then it messed up my stomach. Then I've done the diet pills. I've done the crash diets. I've done the, I'm not going to eat till afternoon. You guys, you have to change your mindset. Back to mm -hmm. mindset. Mm -hmm. It's back to mindset, self-control, and discipline. Nothing is going to last until you change your mind and your relationship around food and dieting. It is not a diet. It's a lifestyle. Certain things, yeah, you can have your little cakes and your sweets and stuff, but you have to change your mindset around food and working out. Yeah. And I think that's what I've been able to do over the past two years. It's my lifestyle now. I look for green juice everywhere. I look for smoothie bars. I look for, you know, salad bars. I try to work out. I'm in L.A. I worked out three times this week, even though I'm out of town. I try to find people in the city I'm in. It has to be a part of your lifestyle. You mm -hmm. can't just do a crash diet. There's no longevity in that. Mm -hmm. You have Absolutely. to figure out what works for you and your body, mm -hmm. you know. So now how are you taking every everything that you've created, right, and – making you've made multiple brands yes. you've had the beauty line yes you're having the fitness yes like and now you're having a mindset thing yes. you're i mean yeah yeah so monetizing that audience you've created the biggest thing for me on my journey is once again monetizing off of my truth i'm just telling my story and i started be simone fit because i was like i'm gonna start this instagram page because mm -hmm. i really want to lose weight it held me accountable publicly because yeah. i'm like if i start this instagram page and in six months i'm still fat I'm going to be embarrassed. So I really have to keep up working out on this Instagram page. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was like, day one, y'all. And then six months later, your day one picture looked the same. <laughs> you can't do that. So it held me accountable to my following in the community I built to stay on it. Have something hold you accountable. A friend, you can mm -hmm. post it on Instagram publicly, whatever. But that was my journey in that moment. So I was like, let me start a Be Simone Fit brand. This is what I'm doing in my real life. So I don't have to promote or market anything that I don't believe in. Right. I'm not trying to sell my audience anything. I'm I'm telling y'all the truth and you either align with it or you don't. And if you don't, it's not for you. But this is my truth and this is how I can pour it into my audience because of my experience. I don't have all the the knowledge, but I have wisdom because I went through it. Yeah. You know, so I don't know everything about everything. I just know my experience. So I like to do that. Be someone beauty. I'm a licensed cosmetologist. And I love, love to lip gloss and makeup and all the things. So I'm like, let me start a, a makeup line, a cosmetic line. I'm super into skincare. That's the ultimate goal. But it aligns with my lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So I'm not promoting something I don't believe in. Yeah. So you're already talking about these things that you're anyway, passionate about. Yeah. And now it's like, now I have. Yeah, now <laughs> I have it. Yeah. And I try to, you know, I try to align it with what I'm doing. The mindset aspect of it. That came to me recently because I went back to the community I came from in Dallas, Texas. And, you know, I'm like, dang, man, like their mind is still the same. Mm -hmm. Once you shift something in your mind, that is when you'll succeed. But I think a, a lot of people have the same mindset across the board and it keeps them very stagnant. Well, and, you know, you can have the strongest willpower. Yeah. But like what would have happened to you if you would have stayed in Dallas? Because your environment is stronger than your willpower. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. If you're around negativity, if you're around darkness, it, even if you have a light, eventually it's going to be dimmed. Eventually. You think you're going to brighten the whole, you know, everybody that's dark around you. But no, they're actually dimming your light because you you close in to make everybody else comfortable. Mm -hmm. You know, so you have to go where you can be your true, authentic, best self. How has that been for you to be like this huge celebrity? I mean, even at church, you guys, she had a line <laughs> of people. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I guess I'll be the bodyguard right now. All right. You guys, was like, no more okay? pictures. She was like, you OK? You want to take more? I'm like, it's OK. <laughs> but I mean, to go from, you know, this normal yeah. girl yeah. to now a huge celebrity mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. you walk anywhere and people mm -hmm. know who you are. How does it feel to go back and be around the people who know Braylon? Yeah, it feels good, but it's I think it's more weird for them. Yeah. I like truly show up in sweats and wig off, no makeup on. And they're like, all right, beat Miss Beeson. I'm like, y'all, 
like y'all are being weird. I'm over here eating cake, you know, <laughs> with my with my feet up and I don't have on no no nothing. I'm just, you know, so sometimes I think they have this vision of who you are or mm-hmm. to the world. Like you're not be Simone to us, you're Braylon. I'm like, I know, I showed up as Braylon. Like mm-hmm. you don't have to say that, you know? So I think it's 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 weird sometimes going back around around them, but very supportive very proud, very supportive. And um, that's the goal to make my family and my friends that I came up with very, very proud. You mm-hmm. know, my dad's a pastor. So I still, I'm still a daddy's girl. I still want him to be like, I'm proud of my daughter, you mm-hmm. know, and I know I'm doing that. And yeah, I'm proud of myself. You know, this is I'm, entrepreneurship, cameras, social media. It's not easy. We're putting ourselves out there in front of a lot of people. So I'm proud of the hits I've taken publicly, privately. I keep getting up. I keep fighting. And once again, I keep my eye on the vision. I know I'm going to be in arenas. I know I'm going to be helping young girls change their mindset. I know I'm going to be more into fitness and lifestyle and an overall healthy mindset. Like I know what I saw. So I just have to keep working until I get there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How does your faith in God keep you like connected to that vision? You know what? I grew up in the church. I was an usher. I was in the choir. I was at the pastor's retreat. I'm like, daddy, I can't listen to no more gospel songs. We've been in church all day. Please. I am falling asleep. But I was in church a lot. And I grew up Baptist Christian. And recently, last November, I rededicated my life to Christ because I was asking myself the questions, why do I believe what I believe? Mm -hmm. Why am I not Muslim? Why am I not atheist? Why am I not any anything else why do i believe what i am saying i believe and the answer was not good enough for me the answer was literally because i was raised like that because my dad said so because my grandmother believes because my it wasn't because i had a true encounter and relationship with jesus christ mm-hmm. for myself so i'm more focused on that now and my life has shifted tremendously mm-hmm. i always use the analogy i'm like you can believe in beyonce all day i believe she exists i believe she's a human i believe She's an artist. I believe she's beautiful. I don't know her. Mm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I can believe in her all day. I don't know that lady from a can of paint, you know? So knowing Jesus Christ for yourself and believing in him are two totally different things. So I started that journey with having a relationship with him for myself. And oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It rocked your world. What? Mm -hmm. The most beautiful experiences, encounters. And that's what people mean when there's a knowing Like Mm -hmm. nobody can tell me he's not real because I have gone to seek him for myself and I found him, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm, So good. I want to go back to the Potter's house. Yeah, we have to go. There's one in LA, isn't there? Is there? There's a Potter's house, LA. Oh, I think it was Sarah's um, husband used to be a pastor out here, right? Yeah. Sarah Jake's husband. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's so cool. Mm -hmm. We have to go. I know. Next time you're out here. (laughs) Next time. So you have really done this like beautiful thing online because I know you talk about God and you give him like glory and all that you do. What do you say to like there? I know that there's people out there that are haters. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Okay. That's just a given. Yeah. How do you kind of like not let that get to you and still be a good witness? You know, at the beginning, it was super hard. Mm -hmm. Like, and it wasn't like, if somebody's like, she's not funny or she got a big forehead or she's chubby or is she pregnant? It's like, no, I'm not pregnant. I just had Chipotle, (laughs) ma'am. You know, they can say all the the vain things. I don't really, that doesn't bother me as much as when people question character. Yes. Like, I do not want my character or my name to be questioned because, especially because I work so hard in real life on it, Mm -hmm. on trying to, you know, be a good person and do my best and making sure my heart is pure and shifting my intentions when sometimes I'm human and I might be angry or upset or have a negative thought. I I focus on not living in that and being a good person. So that's difficult for me. But once again, y'all, you got to focus on the truth. I know it sounds so hard and it is. And sometimes I have my moments where if I'm publicly, you know, humiliated I cry like I'm a human I will cry I will be sad I will be disappointed I want everybody to like me but no I don't care if we all of us in this room can go feed the homeless down on skid row today we can just do it by the kindness of our heart if God just told us to do that we're giving out money and doing this and giving them food and washing them Somebody gonna say, "Well, why did you record it?" Oh my God, <laughs> right? You know, and right. If, if you don't record it, she don't never do nothing for the community. Okay, well now I'm showing y'all do something. Why'd you record it? You just doing it for can? 
It doesn't matter what you do. If your heart is pure and you have good intent, you have to focus on your purpose and your calling that God has for your life. No matter what you do, people are going to have something negative to say about it. So you got to focus on that too. Mm -hmm. You know, focus on the truth. I know my heart. I know my purpose. And I know God will honor that. Yes. No matter how hard it is, he will honor it. I always say like God has our best interest in mind. Yes. And he is the vindicator. That, ooh, so I'm always silent, you know, because it's like people who talk a lot and want to say things, oh my they, their true character is always it's revealed. All, oh, thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. He is the vindicator. Mm -hmm. I'm always quiet in the yeah. midst of a storm. Let it happen. Be quiet. It hurts. You can cry. Be quiet. Mm -hmm. Be quiet. God will speak for because you. Because that is God's character. Like he didn't have to fight back and be like, I'm, I am rah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. I am the Messiah. Yeah. He's yeah. just like, okay, I'm going to show you. Kill me. I'm going to okay. rise again. See you in three days. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus was like, <laughs> Bye. see you in three days. Yeah. <laughs> right. And it's so, but it's hard when you're in it, you know, yeah. and I know that there's a lot of new entrepreneurs listening in right now that are in it. Yeah. And it's so hard. Yeah. It's so hard. And, you know, you're just living proof for us that Thank you. we can, we can do it. We got to just Push keep our eyes it. on the prize. Yeah. Yep. Stay focused and connected to God. Yep. What are three tips you want to leave our listeners with today on entrepreneurship? You know what? Okay. So I'm, this is a little, mindset but this is one I was going to say when you were talking feeding your mind the right things like I followed a lot of pages and I know people get offended when you unfollow so guess what guys just mute them a lot of things that I didn't want on my timeline anymore as I started to shift and evolve my appetite shifted and evolved yes. so a lot of things that I was double tapping I don't want to double tap now I don't want to see that now I don't want to see who's sleeping with who on the blogs and y'all stressing me out I ain't even got a man I don't care who you sleeping with where my husband at <laughs> You know, all the gossip. We're going to find the, you one. Yes, girl. I can, oh, thank you so much. I know he's out there somewhere. Oh, don't make me blush. I love my man. If you're watching, I love you, babe. Um, <laughs> um, so, yes, make sure you're feeding yourself positivity. Like, the news and the this. Mm -hmm. Yes, you want to stay updated on on what's going on in the world. I understand that. But don't consume it. All right. the negativity. Make sure you're feeding yourself positivity entrepreneurship back to the gift the second tip find your gift so your your business idea your job your your purpose doesn't feel like work mm -hmm. I love what I do and I know pouring into people and a part of my purpose is becoming more clear and you might have multiple purposes when you got married a part of your purpose was to be a good wife right and motherhood and your purpose shift as your chapters in your life shift but find your gift you guys if you don't know your gift once again what comes easy to you but is difficult for other people, whether it's patience, mm -hmm. organization, laughter, wh whatever that is, you know, you know what comes easy to you that you don't have to work too hard for. That's a gift. So try to um, intertwine that in with your purpose and don't be money driven. Oh, you're talking to me. The money's going to come, girl. I know. What? I have had million dollar months and then I've had <laughs> negative <laughs> People asking for refunds. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> Lord. So it's gonna, that's what you're signing up for with entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. Even in this season, I'm like, you know, I've, I've taken a lot of budget cuts because I've stepped back and said no to a lot of things to perfect my craft more. I don't want to just be on everybody's show doing, I want to perfect my craft. I want to go in this season and hibernate and really hone in on being the best stand up comedian yes. I can be, opposed to overextending my, my gift, right? So, you're going to take some money cuts. You're going to you're going to not always. I think social media has made it seem like a million dollars is just five dollars. Right. I want to make a million dollar a month. What? Mm -hmm. If you made a million dollars in two years, that is a win. Yes. If you made it in 10 years, that is a, a million dollars is a lot of money. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I think people are just so quick to want the money and the success so fast. You're missing the journey. And God's going to give you the same lesson until you get it. 100% over and I'm going through that right now I'm like this is a pattern in my life I will never be here again I don't care how many books you won't. I have to read on boundaries mm -mm, you won't. I'm like I get the lesson God I get it I didn't get it before I get it now so make sure you're paying attention to when you're in that pain and learning the lesson that's in that season mm, so yeah good so where can everybody find you because I know they're gonna be like yes. where is she 
Yes. Okay. Instagram, the B Simone. I have a close friends community. It's um, I have guest speakers on there every month. You guys can sign up for my close friends. And yeah, on tour, just follow me and turn my post notifications on. So when I'm in your city, you can come laugh and have a little date night or girls night and come to a comedy show. Yeah. Yes. I can't wait to see you in real life. I, know. I just watch it on your social. Now, now, Kayla, it's not gospel comedy. <laughs> I I know. (laughs) Trust me. I was, oh, okay. All right. Kids, cover your ears right now. I ain't up there talking about Peter, Satan, John, and Paul. Okay. I'm up there talking about my exes. And I hate my exes. So we're going to get to it. No, I'm just kidding. I don't hate my exes. But, you know, I talk about my life and I'm, I'm still working in. My transition, the thing about me is people are watching my transition. Mm-hmm. So I don't get to hide any parts of me. Shani, her husband is a pastor and he posted something on Instagram the other day. He said, when you change and when you shift and give your life to God, your Instagram story is going to be like church, then wine, <laughs> then the club, then church, then the Bible. Then you, it's, yes. I'm yeah. in transition and I'm I'm choosing to show you that so you know you're not alone if you're also trying to get closer to God it's a journey y'all just focus on your own relationship with him and don't let anybody tell you you're doing it the wrong way yes you know I know I'm I'm on my journey the right way so yeah you got to come to a comedy show Mm -hmm. oh my gosh well thank you so much for being on today I love you I love you and you just brightened up you know the day and everybody's little ears as they're (laughs) listening to this right now so listening yeah they'll follow you we'll link everything up in the show notes and then we have to have you back on anytime again and I'll be on time (laughs) y'all I, my, I was supposed to be here at three o'clock. I came at 11. I'm like, you ready? She's like, you're a little early. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, I think I'm on Atlanta time, but we worked it out and I'm so glad to pour into community and I'm so into your community and I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Like we've talked personally and you know, we just are now getting to know each other, but the stuff you've been through that you haven't even shared with me or the world or anybody that God sees in your quiet time, you're, you're still pushing, you're still kicking, you're still showing up and you're killing shit. <laughs> Thank you. I just wanted to say that. So it hits, <laughs> you know, uh, you're killing it. And I'm Thank proud you. of you. I love you. And this is only the beginning for both of us. Yeah. As long as we keep showing up and doing what God told us to do. Piece of cake. I know. It's going to be good. Want some cake? <laughs> I do, actually. <laughs> Where is the chocolate? I just left the gym. <laughs> Literally talking about some cake. I need a protein shake. That's what I need. Thanks for listening in. Thank you. Bye, y'all.